I've made the game in 3 days. The theme was delayed the inevitable. And my first idea was to make a platforming game where you play as a robot which overheats frequently and when he does happens you get teleported to another place. It's a really good idea because then the game wouldn't be a puzzle game. Again, making levels would be a breeze. And I wouldn't have to worry about graphics because I would just make something abstract and say, hey, this is RoboView. This is how robots view things. So I've started working on a movement system. Most of the time I make a very simple script, which actually I think SCP Script Laboratory uses, so yeah, there's that. But since this game focuses on platforming, I've decided to put more time into it. So I've implemented all of the passwords. Gravity, momentum, head bobbing, jump cue, coyote time. And then I showed it off to my friend and he suggested, hey, add dashing. And I said, okay. At first you could only dash forward, but I've noticed that if you weren't pressing anything that she would just levitate. So the immediate idea was to make you just dash up. But since that felt a little bit clunky, it eventually evolved into just a simple double jump. But technically the game still counted as a dash, so I've also realized that the whole process of not pressing a single movement key and then dashing wasn't really intuitive, so I just moved it into its own separate button. Also, did I mention, I finally made my own input system. And turns out, it's actually pretty nifty. I didn't use any of the fancy features this jump because, like, I don't like them. But I always have the option. The second thing that I feel implemented was the heat system, which is literally just a timer. But when that timer reaches zero, or in this case I guess 100, you get teleported to one of the previous checkpoints. At first it just reverted the entire game, but quickly I realized that that wasn't really fun, so I just made it for gore what the previous saves and yeah, it works. The most basic thing that I could quickly implement, aka just reuse the old code, are moving platforms and switches, because that does something, I think. Luckily, this jump, I didn't go through the pain at this moving vertical platforms, because holy garbage, does this engine just absolutely despise physics. I already have different notes from Ludumdare48 on how to actually handle this, because just moving a player with a platform, nah, too difficult for this engine, because, because the reference rates and then moving and updating physics and fixed update and movement and frame rate. Who cares about verticality? If you can go really really fast, holy garbage, this is fun. So yeah, if you want a moving platform horizontally, you also need to somehow pass the velocity to a player. So I've made this simple component which just if the player touches it, it moves. But then I realized, hey, I can actually use this to my advantage. And this is how I accidentally invented the speed path. If you stand on it, you move. So since we have all of those amazing mechanics, let's actually put them to use. Levels. Holy garbage. I did some Minecraft parkour maps back in the day, but honestly, what do you do? And since there's dashing in this game, I've decided, hey, Celeste. And I just spent like an hour watching Celeste gameplay, and I've learned a lot. I'm sorry, is this man like just watching a television in the background, like... <laughs> He's, he's actually w watching the weather channel, holy garbage. One of the things that I've learned, at least from the starting areas, was that actually there isn't really that much depth into it. I mean, yeah, yeah, there are some actual like clever tricks, but most of the time it's just random platforms in random places. And the other fun thing that I've learned was to not make the first level yet. Because when you make the first level, most of the time it's really boring, it teaches players stuff, and most of the time you have a tutorial for something you don't know how to use. Why do you keep doing this? It's like you are a teacher, but you never had any practice in what you are actually doing. So I've made this little level just playing around with different dashing mechanics, which later I had to scrap because I've changed some numbers in the movement system because the double jump was a little bit overpowered, and I changed the air movement a little bit. Saving! is a thing I actually never did properly. I know, I know, there is that one game, but we don't talk about it. I know how to save files, but I don't know how to save the game, really. So what I did was I've made this little funny system, which basically consists of different nodes that actually handle the saving. So basically when I say, hey, save, then the manager says to all of the nodes, hey, save, and then they say, okay, and then I just say, hey, screw it, revert all of that. And they say, okay, what is the first thing that you see in a game? That's right, the made with Unity splash screen. But what do you see after it? That's right, the loading screen. But what do you actually see after it? That's right, the splash image. But what do you see after it? Another loading. Are you serious? The main menu. Since you play as a robot, I've said okay. But is it just me or is the main menu looking kind of thick? Shut up, Daniel. Shut up.
Shush. And since I was using QASIC, all of the scripts were technically already done for me. I've only made this little button script which would just do this. It's it's it, it's re it's really cool, alright? It's a really cool anime. That's not an animation. It's a really cool transition, alright? And since it was getting late, I've decided to work on some glitch effects because, you know, computer. So I've spent 4 hours searching on the internet for some quality glitch effects. And we have some things like Kino glitch, this with Japanese or Chinese or who cares, I don't know how to read your language. And many other things on GitHub and Unity Asset Store, but which of them are compatible with URP? Oh, so it turns out URP is a hot mess. I mean, alright, I understand that not everything can be actually compatible, but when I actually found some cool assets that were supposed to work with URP, they didn't! And I have actually no idea why. One of them refused to render the camera, and the other one... What is this Mr. URP support? What do you actually expect me to do? To open the stupid shader graph? No, goodbye, shut up! Day 2 and I finally decided to make some proper graphics. I mean, how hard can it actually be? Turns out I suck at art. No matter if it's a gun, no matter if it's a piece of paper, no matter if it's stupid gimp of all things, I do does not understand the artisto. But since I was using the Outgrass prototype textures, and Outgrass is the little group that we have with friends that we make games but they don't really make games, I've said screw it. I just slapped a random color, generated a mesh, generated another mesh but this time it was a little bit thicker and it was a little bit more bigger. And there you go. Graphics. A robot. AI. Windows 10 operating system. UI was another interesting thing. I wanted to have this big bar on the left that would display the temperature, and this little man on the right that would visualize all of your body parts or something. I decay, I'm not a doctor. But since you're playing as Linux, I wanted to make the user interface a little bit round. Like in Halo or. Actually, that's all the games that I play. But since I didn't want the main view to be affected, I've separated the UI into a separate camera that would house the user interface effects, meanwhile the normal camera would house the normal effects. But it turns out that in URP, if you overlay a camera on top of another camera, that camera inherits its effects for some reason. I went to countless forums and Unity answers and what have you. You just cannot do it. Even Unity has their own example, but nah, no, it, it doesn't actually do that. This thing is a lie. You cannot overlay cameras with separate effects in URP. Why is URP such an absolute piece of garbage? I think 4 out of 10 games these days have rounded UI that doesn't affect the media, but you know what? Screw it, what do I know? My friend also suggested to decrease the opacity by a little bit, so it would actually feel like you are a robot and not a... gamer. Another cool effect that I've made was this. The hotter you get, the more ladies you have. I mean, the hotter you get, the more red the UI gets. And it does this little wee 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 animation. Also, this. This is a virtual ruler. You have this cool window where you can set up how long it is and what color it is and save presets and great tool. Love it. It's amazing, I think. So instead of guessing everything, I could actually measure everything properly. And I tell you, if you make a platforming game, you should definitely have this. During this jam, I also made many other tools. Not to mention that I was using QASIC, so I had access to this very powerful console and this very cool debug displayer. How oh, I could marry this thing. What I am trying to say here is that I've made many different commands. You can change even the the entire movement system if you really want to. One other cool thing that I've made for testing levels was the test point system, where basically I could just place this point anywhere in the level and just run test point command to teleport to it. Not to mention I've also made a lot of gizmos for platforms and switches, which compared to Ludendare 48 it was actually really easy to add platforms, instead of once again having to guess everything, then test it, then change it, then test it, then change it over and over again. You know, why waste time? Just make the back tools or just download QASIC. Please download QASIC. The game was pretty much done, but the main thing I had missed was actual proper levels. And since the movement changed a bit, I couldn't reuse the old levels, so I've decided to start working from scratch. I think I've explored a lot of different ideas. Switches, platforms, preserving momentum, actual thinking. Okay, that will be a good position. Of oh, this part. That's far. In the end, I've managed to make two levels. I was focusing more on making longer levels than many levels because, well, you have to overheat at some point. If the level is three seconds long, then that's not really going to happen. So I've quickly built the game and sent it to my friend for playtesting. This game jam, I've actually made an insane amount of playtesting compared to like, game doesn't work? Don't care. It's 2 a.m., I want to sleep. Most of my friends said that they really enjoyed the game being difficult. And you know, it isn't really a good idea to make a difficult game for a game. 
game jam because most people if they die once they say okay yep I've seen enough all right uh, one star and I've already received a couple of complaints for the game being too difficult so in the post jump version I've actually added difficulty settings another thing that I've realized when watching them play was that people didn't really know why you were just teleported randomly into a certain place I mean I've told them about the overheat mechanic but it was not really apparent that you overheated it was more like okay I guess I'm here now so I just slapped on this big screw of text that says HEY YOU ARE ABOUT TO DIE Yeah, I think I've made myself clear What do you see at the end of each game? That's right, the main me- NOT AGAIN ENDING I wanted to make this dark room with a single light that was over your head where you just had to walk towards the end While some random text appeared because, yeah, narrative Originally it was actually supposed to be a room but then I realized hey, this is ugly So I just made the walls invisible then hey, now you have some kind of invisible barrier because uh, uh, then I realized that if you don't have any walls or anything, how can you actually know where to go? And I just imagined somebody looking in the completely wrong direction, not realizing that I've made some actual cool dialogue and just think, hey, this game broken, goodbye. So the cheap trick is to just put something at the end. So I've made this big door which is actually just a simple quad with an unlit texture, but Bloom makes it look like it's very important. And if you want to see the ending and know what is actually going on, IDK play the game on the hardest difficulty or else you're not an epic gamer and you will actually go to hell. Sound effects. I suck at them. And you can tell because one of the most neglected things in QASIC is the audio manager. I know that I said it was the input system, but now it isn't, so hey, this is our new enemy. Also, it turns out Brack is light to you, and this is what I learned this jump. I've been doing this for five years, and I've always thought that this is how you do it. Turns out, no. How can you do this to us, Broccoli man? We've trusted you for so long and you just betray us! So I tried making sound effects, but my microphone was way too low and they were trash. So I said, screw it, I am going to use SFXR. <laughs> This sucks. So finally at 10am I went into my basement and recorded some quote unquote footsteps. Which you know it doesn't really make much sense because you are a robot so there shouldn't be any footsteps. But I have no idea how to do other sound effects. How do you do sound effects? I have no idea. And for the ambiance. I placed my microphone on the window and then just pitched it down a little bit. Which you know it's, it's not really... It's not good. But it exists. And then I've made the settings menu. Frank. It's 11 p.m. Why would you do a settings menu? You see, QASIC has this fancy settings system which I keep using in every single game jam. Especially because the Italian people don't have a back hold key. Like for crying out loud, just buy a normal keyboard! And to promote QASIC, I am legally obligated to add a settings menu to every single one of my games. The thing that made me really sad when I was playtesting the game with my friends was that I had to actually talk to them and explain the rules. To fix this, I've added a tutorial which would display on the top right corner. And now, I don't have to talk to anybody. Another sad thing is that most people think this is a Unity Cube, but it's actually a special model which I've made in Blender which has over 3000 vertices and you can press E on it to activate things. So since in STP Secret Laboratory I can reload my grenade, I've added the same prompt into my game. And now, I actually didn't have to explain anything in the game's description. So yeah, that's how I've made my game. I forgot about the icon. Oh no. To make the icon I've just took this little man, added this little background, made this grid, and there I go son, this is how we do icons. This was quite a fun game jam. I mean the game was cool I guess. It wasn't a puzzle game so of course that's a win. And this jam also gave me an idea for a very cool website which I might do one day. Because you don't even want to know how unstable the newest 2020 Unity LTS releases. Long term support? I'm sorry, where is the support part? Your engine literally didn't compile scripts. I had to open normal scripts, press spacebar, save, and then they would finally work. Unity, what happened? Explain, no, I want to know. What's going on? Every single game jam I use the newest long term support release. It never works. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm really sorry that I neglected this channel because like, you know, it's been almost 6 months since the last upload. But when I finally finish the QASIC video, I hope I will once again go back to normal small videos. Maybe even just normal devlogs about my game. But if you don't want to wait, then there is my second channel where I upload kinda frequently, I guess. So yeah, that's it for today. Well bye stranger.